Okay, we're back in SynthEyes now, and we're about to do the fun stuff, which is to explore the smudge tool. The first thing I did uh, is change the color of this object to uh, a light blue color. And the reason I did that is because I want to discuss the viewport layout manager. And I want to make a new layout. I've already made this layout, actually. It's, uh, it's down here. It's called the smudge layout. I'm going to delete that layout because we're going to start over. And I'm going to pick a view, like uh, the perspective view. Yeah, that's a good one. And duplicate it. And then give it a name, like smudge, like the one I just deleted. And then I'm going to split this horizontally. I have to select it first. And I'm going to split that view horizontally. That confused me a little bit at first. I thought a horizontal split was going to split it horizontally this way, but it's splitting it against the horizontal axis. It's just a semantics thing you're going to have to get used to. But it, this is very powerful, the viewport layout manager. So I'm going to go to the front view here, double click on that, and make that a perspective view as well, perspective V. And this save all button is pretty great. Save all layouts for future runs. That'll save this smudge layout anytime I run Synthize in the future now. Hit OK on that. And then I'm going to zoom out a little. I noticed something earlier. Um, my alignment wasn't totally great. And so I want to actually do a little more work on that. Turn off height handles, bring those back. Zoom in very slightly and pan down a little bit. I'm gonna hold on the control key. I'm gonna rotate this slightly to the right. Take a look again. Really that, that whole alignment thing is all about just getting a best fit. And so I'm looking and it would be nice if my ears were more like that, like the overhang on my ears was pretty equal while also getting my eyes to line up. So we just kind of, I kind of walked away from that a little too soon. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Great. That's, that's I think, a best fit. That's as good as it's gonna fit. Now we're gonna hide those handles and get into the smudge tool. There are a lot of controls here, a lot of new things going on with the smudge tool. You've got the smudge mesh button, that's the first thing. You've got softly no and softly yes. So with softly no, you can click and drag on here and drag your brush size up, or you can just put your mouse in the viewport and wheel in and out. Let's uh, also do the same over here. Let's turn the smudge mesh tool on in this perspective viewport. So there, with smudge, with softly no turned on, middle mouse wheel adjusts the brush size. With softly yes, the middle mouse wheel adjusts, oh, it doesn't adjust the brush size anymore. No, it adjusts the range. Let's go back to softly no for just a second. Back in this viewport. Now we're just gonna drag. Hey, that's cool, look at that. We're just dragging and smudging the mesh. Undo that. You see brush through on here? Let's turn that off. Set it's brush surface. We'll drag again. Looks like we're doing the same thing, but wait, we're not because we're not affecting the vertices that are not facing the camera. So let's undo that again and turn on brush through and drag. Now we can see we're dragging all the way through. That can cause a lot of problems. Be very careful about brush through and brush surface. Let's turn off the handles over here and orbit around. I basically want a different view here than what I'm seeing here so that I can monitor what I'm doing in this viewport. Let's zoom in a little bit and pan down. Now, why would, what's the difference? Softly no and softly yes. Like why would I want one or the other? Softly yes if I drag in this viewport. Now you can see everything within the brush is treated as though it is at 100% intensity. So I'm, I'm moving everything under the brush at 100% and the fall off happens outside of the brush. So typically with softly yes on, you want a brush size that's very small 
And remember, the middle mouse wheel with softly S on adjusts the range and not the brush size. So small brush size, so if you click on a vertex. Now, if you click, drag, and hold down the button, the left mouse button, and wheel with your middle finger on the, on the mouse wheel, you can adjust the fall off. Now what's the difference? Why would I want one and not the other? Well, it's pretty cool because with softly yes on, I can grab my bottom lip here, drag that down, and, and reduce the, the range and only affect the vertices that are connected to the bottom lip. But we have a problem if you look in the right hand viewport, you see it with uh, brush through turned on, what's happening underneath my ear there? Let's turn that off and set it to brush surface. There. So a lot of controls and it's important that you understand how all of these work and they're only going to work as well as you get good at using them. You can't really demand that Photoshop is gonna retouch a photo or an image for you. You have to really be in control of the software and all of its myriad functions. So I'm gonna use softly yes right here and make an adjustment to my cheek. I'm gonna leave brush surface on, and I'm gonna click right here and drag this cheek out, and wheel on the mouse and try and get that uh, working well. And I'm gonna pull these in a little bit, get my forehead going. Okay, that's much better. Let's make some adjustments to my eye here. Let's pull that down. Let's pull this down a little bit, and get the eye holes working better. That softly yes is gonna work really much better for these eyelids because I can drag the bottom eyelid and not affect the top vertices more effectively with softly yes on. So, we'll get that eye hole looking good from that camera view. You gotta think about this too. Everything you're doing here, all these smudges that you're gonna do from this viewport are all being done perpendicular to the camera. Let's dolly out here, pan over. So if the camera is viewing straight forward, we can see that here. Every adjustment we make is gonna happen perpendicular to the camera's view. So let's undo that, let's orbit a little bit so we can get a better view of what's happening with my cheek. I'm gonna pull my cheek straight out in the camera's space. See what's happening there? It's pulling it straight out, exactly perpendicular to the camera. 90%, maybe 99% of the adjustments you're gonna make with the smudge tool are gonna to be in this viewport, and you'll do them iteratively. Grab that, pull that that way, pull that down a little. Make just slight adjustments. And, uh, and then we'll go here. And hey, look, my eyelid needs to be pulled back in this view, which is happening perpendicular to the camera. So it's, it's going back in the upward direction of this viewport, upward and diagonally. Hey look, my eye looks like it's matching pretty well there. It's matching pretty well there. I probably would do better if this was higher in general because when I'm looking down, it kind of deforms my eye, all the folds of my eyelids so that they, they come down more. But if you do this iteratively, if you do it a little bit here and a little bit here, eventually with all of your adjustments, you're gonna find that every time you make one of these adjustments from each view, it's like Austin Powers in, in the movie uh, The Spy Who Shagged Me in his little go-kart <laughs> making what should be a three-point turn but making like a 75-point turn. That's what, exactly what we're doing here. So if we make these tiny little adjustments, eventually you're gonna find that the eye is gonna match really pretty well. Good enough, good enough. So like I said, when, I, when I'm looking down, it pulls my 
upper eyebrow, the, the area of my skin under my eyebrow pulls it down. I could do some deformation tracking on that and we could capture that, but I don't think we're gonna get that granular. We'll pull that up. I think this might be a good time to start doing a time lapse. Yeah, that's pretty great. I mean, it fits my nostrils now line up properly. My eye holes line up properly. Let's get that one up a little bit. Um, the, uh, my mouth lines up. That's, that's great. My ears even line up, even though we're not doing anything with the ears. But that's how the smudge tool works. I personally need to do a lot more practicing with it because it is, while it's very powerful, it's really more of an artist's tool. You're really sculpting with it and your expectation level should be set accordingly. It's not gonna do any work for you. Now, this is you. This is all you. It's all on you. The pressure's on. Let's get to the next part. It gets more exciting. Part four is gonna be the soft track. <laughs> 